Hello Year 5, welcome to Science This Term. Uh, we're going to be talking about properties and changes of materials. So let's get started. What are the states of batter and how do they change? Before we begin though, as we always do, let's start with our do now. You can pause the video and then unpause it when you've finished. Welcome back. Let's go through the answers. Number one, what type of force is friction? It's a contact force. Number two, friction acts in the opposite direction as movement. Number three, the smoother the surface, the less friction it will produce. Number four, air resistance is a type of friction that changes what? It changes the speed. And what is the layer of bacteria that forms on your teeth called? It's called plaque. So let's start by just identifying the three, the three states of matter. Do you know what they are? Yeah, they're solid, liquid and gas. Can you give examples of a solid? Just say it out loud. Yeah, fantastic. I can think of a couple, a pen, a table or even a book. What about liquid? What ideas do you have? Any more? Um, yes, there's a syrup or perhaps lemonade and water is also definitely liquid. And what about gas? Oxygen is a gas. Yes, any more? Mm, what about those bubbles in fizzy water or soft drinks? Those, that's gas too. So now let's take a, a look at the properties of each matter. Solids, they keep their shape. They have a fixed volume, which means the amount of change, and they do not change shape to fill a container. And liquids, now they have a fixed volume, they do not have a fixed shape, and they change their shape to fit a container. Now we have gases. They do not have a fixed shape and they do not have a fixed volume either, but they do fill all of an available space. So how do our three states of matter vary? What I'd like you to do is to draw a little grid. In your first column, I want you to write shape, volume, and then fill. And then I would like you to write solids, and then write down what you know about the shape, volume, um, and whether it fills a space. Uh, with liquids, does it change its shape? Does it have a fixed volume or not? Does it fill an available space? And gas too. Pause the video to complete that task. And when you've finished, unpause it and we'll continue. Next, we are going to do a little experiment. Demonstration, dancing raisins. Um, what happens when we put raisins into sparkling water? So, just bear with me one moment. Here we are. Okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to fill up with some sparkly water, carbonated water. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop some raisins in and let's see what happens to them. to those raisins. Hmm. 
Watch carefully. They seem to be floating to the top. I wonder why that is. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Now, I can see that the raisins are completely surrounded by bubbles of gas. So we've put some uh, raisins inside the fizzy water. The raisins are what matter? Are they solid, liquid or gas? Say it out loud. You're right, they are solid. Those tiny bubbles that surround the raisins, what do you think that is? Solid, liquid or gas? Yeah, they are little bubbles of gas. And what's happening is it's making the raisins float to the top. And when they get to the top, those little bubbles reach the surface and they pop and the bubbles of air disperse into the air, which then causes the raisins to sink down to the bottom. So it looks as though our raisins are dancing. Now we're going to continue with our lesson, but perhaps if you have some um, fizzy water or some lemonade, um, you can do this at home. When will it stop, I wonder? Maybe that's something that you can try, okay? Okay. So, what did we see in our experiment? What I would like you to do for your independent task is to draw a picture and then I would like you to label it. I'd like you to label it with water, which is your liquid, the air bubbles, which are the gas, and then the raisins, which are the solids. Then, underneath your diagram, I would like you to write a description of what you observed. You can start with, I observed that when the raisins were added, and then to continue. I've done one. It's quite different, but this is my one, so you can take a look. So, when I dropped the raisins into the fizzy water, the liquid, they sank to the bottom. The bubbles of gas attached themselves to the raisins, solids, which made them float to the top. Once they reached the top, the bubbles of gas popped and gas was released into the air. This made the raisin lose its buoyancy, so its ability to float, and the raisins, the solid, sank back down to the bottom of the water. Now, I haven't started it with the sentence that I need to, I observed that when the raisins were added, but you can do that and you can describe what happened in your own words. If you need some help, here are some uh, sentences and some words to help you. Okay, pause the video and finish that task. And when you've finished, unpause it and we'll continue. Changes, changes of state. Whilst we have three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas, some materials can change from one into another. So, for example, we might start off with a solid and that might change into a liquid. What do you think might cause that? If you know, tell me now. Brilliant. That's called melting. And can you think of any examples of when a solid might melt into a liquid? Yeah, absolutely. I can think of some too. Perhaps an ice lolly and it started to melt onto your hand or some delicious ice cream that started to melt in your bowl. And then we also have ice in water. Now, we also have another change of liquid forming into a solid. What would that 
be called? Do you know? If you know, say it out loud. Absolutely, yes, it's called freezing. Can you think of an example? Might be coming coming to it this week. Mm, yeah, snow, for example. Snow starts out as water and then freezes and becomes a solid. Sleet as well, which are tiny bits of ice, they start out as um, water and then turn into bits of ice. What about if we had a liquid which then turned into gas? What is that process called? Tell me. Yeah, it's evaporation. Absolutely. Can you think of examples of when you've seen or experienced evaporation? Share your ideas now. Mm, yeah, one I can think of is if it's been raining in the morning, we go outside to the playground and there are lots of puddles and it doesn't rain for the rest of the day and we go out for play in the afternoon and there are no more puddles left. So the water, the liquid, has evaporated into a gas. And finally, we have condensation. Now, condensation is the process through which a gas changes into a liquid, usually due to temperature. So it's when something goes from quite something warm to cold. Have you ever seen it? Yeah, maybe in your bathroom or the window. Absolutely. Overnight, the temperature drops. And so this causes gas to change into a liquid. And it looks a little bit like this, like on your window. Great. The final task is to complete this. Now, you don't have to draw a triangle. You can just write solid and then an arrow to liquid. What causes a liquid to, sorry, what causes a solid to turn into a liquid? Can you write that process down? And then what's it called when a liquid turns into a gas? Can you write that process down? Good job. I hope you enjoyed that. And don't forget that if you can try the experiment, you might want to take a picture of it and to uh, post it onto Seesaw along with your work. You can see our raisins are still dancing a little bit. Thanks so much. I hope you enjoyed it. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.